this section and going forward, we're going to have a look at physical manifestations that occur uh, as a result of the saints having encounters with the Holy Spirit. And the reason we want to have a look at that is because there are obviously uh, encounters with um, spirits that are not of God that also produce physical manifestations. And so the idea is to um, have a, a biblical frame, framework that helps us to identify that when um, physical manifestations take place in our midst as to what is the spirit uh, behind that manifestation that is causing that physical manifestation to take place. And it's very important for the saints to be able to identify that because there are a lot of um, manifestations that can occur and do occur uh, in the church that are not of God. A lot are of God and a lot are not of God. And so we need to be able to, biblically speaking, um, be able to differentiate between the two and thus be able to avoid that which is obviously not of God. And so <clears throat> it's, uh, it's, it's sadly that you know there are certain ministers of the gospel that allow um, supernatural, well, sorry, allow manifestations to take place in their meetings and they don't quite know which manifestations are which, in other words, which spirit is causing. Because when questionable manifestations take place in their meetings and they've been asked about it, uh, their response has been, well, they're not sure. They don't know if it's the work of the Holy Spirit, the work of the flesh, or the work of an unclean spirit. And the viewpoint is, well, let's wait and see what fruit is produced. So in other words, um, whatever manifestation occurred, they will now wait and see, did that person draw closer to God as a result, or did that person draw away from God? Um, but that's not the counsel of the Lord. The Lord is not pleased with that wait and see attitude. Ministers of the gospel who are not um, au fait with Man, uh, spiritual manifestations taking place or physical manifestations taking place in their meetings as to which spirit is causing it um, have no place exposing the saints to those supernatural powers that are causing those manifestations to take place because you know you think about young and vulnerable believers um, that then get exposed to a false spirit um, through that minister's um, meeting. Well, that's just not of God. That's not pleasing to the Lord. And so um, Satan took take very uh, quick advantage of those ministers that are quite comfortable to allow any manifestation to take place in their meeting. And their viewpoint is, well, let's just wait and see whether that was God or not. Uh, well, that's not the way that uh, the Lord looks after his flock. And he expects his shepherds to be uh, better stewards of the grace of God than that. And so that's why we really do look at this aspect. This whole series is based on looking at our encounters with the Holy Spirit so that we can more clearly from a biblical framework point of view identify which encounters supernatural are of God and which are not of God. And so the physical manifestations that do occur we will have to look at as well. So the first manifestation that we are obviously going to look at, physical manifestation we'll look at with regards to our encounter with the Holy Spirit is the gift of tongues. Because tongues is the main manifestation that always occurs uh, when individuals, when saints are filled with the Holy Spirit. And the scripture says in Acts 2, 4, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And so, as I say, this is the main evidence, um, supernatural, that occurs when saints are in fact baptized or filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, in all of the physical manifestations that we're going to look at over this section, and we won't look at all of them, but we'll look at a number of them, the more common ones that the uh, saints see in uh, church gatherings when supernatural manifestations take place. I'm talking about the physical responses that individuals display as a result of them being uh, encountering uh, supernatural power. <clears throat> and 
So with regards to all of these manifestations, by and large, there are three different types of um, responses, physical manifestations that can occur. One would be um, as a result of the power of the Holy Spirit coming upon the individual. Another one would be purely the flesh. In other words, a person is pretending to have had an encounter with the Holy Spirit and thus um, displays these physical manifestations, but it's all done in the flesh. And then there's the, obviously the more uh, serious one error, which is in fact when there are um, responses, physical manifestations taking place as a result of being exposed to a demonic spirit, a spirit that is not of God. And so uh, with regards to tongues, there are these three different types of physical manifestations that occur. Um, the first one we'll look at is the uh, manifestation of the flesh. In other words, people pretending to speak in other tongues. Um, now, why they do that, there are various reasons why people do that. You even get certain ministers uh, of the gospel, so to speak, who also pretend to speak in other tongues. Now, it's quite easy to pick up the false from that point of view, the fleshly tongues, at, compared to the genuine gift of the Holy Spirit. Because what happens is, the person who pretends to speak in tongues will have one general phrase that they will always speak out, like the words shakababa, or something like that. And they will, every now and then, add a, a slight variation to that phrase, and that will be their tongues that they will speak out. However, tongues is not gibberish. Tongues is, in fact, a proper language. It is a heavenly language that is given to the individual by the Holy Spirit. And so it is quite easy to identify those who would pretend to speak in tongues um, by operating in the flesh. And, and you know, you baby Christians that do get drawn into it and they think, well, that person can speak in tongues, when in actual fact they cannot. Because as I say, it's a very, um, it's just small little phrases that the person makes from time to time, but it's not a a proper language. Any, As I'm speaking now, this is a proper language and that's what tongues is as well. It comes out as a proper language that can be understood by some people in, in some cases in the book of Acts. Uh, that was the case, but nevertheless tongues is a proper language. It is not gibberish. And so that's how we can identify um, tongues spoken in the flesh and not by the Holy Spirit. Now with regards to tongues spoken by demonic spirits, well again the saints should not really be concerned about it because it is only those who are exposed to cultish practices that become vulnerable in this area. And so it's saints that are seeking to be filled with the Holy Spirit in a normal church environment, a Christian church environment, uh, should never be concerned about receiving something that is not of God. They will always receive the Holy Spirit. But as I say, Individuals that um, attend cultish type um, churches, they're the ones that then do get exposed to. And there is, there's a, a definite uh, a cases of individuals speaking uh, a tongue by a demonic spirit. But if you look at the person, you can always see where they got that. They got it when, as they were exposed to cultish practices and they continued in that and they haven't really been born again. They're not in the church and they think they are, they need to obviously be dealt with and obviously the demon um, needs, needs to be, they need to be delivered from that. And so now that brings us to the genuine gift of um, tongues. And so tongues, as I said, is the main evidence that we have been filled with the Holy Spirit. Um, <clears throat> and so because tongues is the main evidence that the saint has been filled with the Holy Spirit. We're going to have a look at this particular manifestation, the genuine that is, in a bit more detail because it is um, one of the, not one, it is the, the most important aspect of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. The power aspect is very important. Tongues uh, forms a part of that power aspect because it's by the supernatural power of God that the saint speaks in other tongues. Um, and so, 
one who has the genuine gift of speaking in other tongues, as I said, they will speak a proper language. Um, it, it may start out in small syllables, just like when we're growing up and we're learning as babies to speak. The first words that come out of our mouths are dad, dad, and mama, things like that. And the language is developed over time. So it is with, with the gift of tongues. The language starts out in small syllables. It can start out in, as a perfect language right up front. Think again of uh, the book of Acts on the day of Pentecost. The saints spoke perfectly in whatever language the Jews could understand. Not all of them obviously spoke in languages that the Jews could understand because the scripture does say that he who speaks there are tongues spoken that no man understands, only God does. But the point that I wanted to get across from this aspect here is that the tongues is in fact a genuine supernatural language that is spoken. Ketrabai veloshked emotra madolved irkada bel javorek imanashkai dolvetraba. And that is tongues really being spoken. Now that um, that I just spoke now was in fact the gift of a diverse kind of tongues. That's not my prayer language that I just spoke out now. And I just, the, uh, the Spirit of the Lord just impressed upon me to um, just speak that up, which I've done. Uh, the interpretation of that is that there is two types of gifts of the Spirit. One is tongues and the other one is kind of tongues. They are not the same, thus saith the Lord. Um, anyway, that came out. Uh, uh, so getting back to the, the gift of uh, other tongues, the gift of tongues that are given to believers when they are filled with the Holy Spirit. Um, there's a, there is a gift in Scripture called the gift of diverse kind of tongues. Now the gift of, it's important that believers uh, know the difference between the two um, tongues that are spoken because the one is not the same as the other. You say, what does that mean? Well, the, one, the, the, the gift of tongues, other tongues, that is given to all believers um, is the, the prayer language that is imparted to them by the Holy Spirit when they are filled with the Holy Spirit. And every single believer baptized in the Holy Spirit can and should speak with other tongues. That is the evidence. It is in fact the main evidence. Don't forget when we had a look at the, the Gentiles who were filled with the Holy Spirit in Cornelius' household. It was only when the Jewish believers heard the Gentiles speak with other tongues that they were convinced they had been baptized with the Holy Spirit. That was the only evidence that they would accept. They would not have accepted um, seeing the saints um, shake, seeing them laugh, seeing them cry, seeing any other manifest, physical manifestation. The only evidence that convinced them that the Gentiles had been baptized in the Holy Spirit was the fact that they had spoken with other tongues. It's a very important point we need to recognize that it is speaking with other tongues that is the evidence, the main evidence, uh, that the saint has in fact been filled with the Holy Spirit. Um, and so let's have a look at this passage of Scripture to highlight the, the truth to us about the fact that um, there are in fact these two gifts. The one is the gift of other tongues and the other one is the gift of diverse kind of tongues. Now just before we look at the passage of Scripture, um, tongues given to the, uh, uh, the church is unique to the church age. The saints under the Old Covenant had no access to tongues and interpretation. The gifts of the Spirit we'll look at now, there are nine listed in uh, the book of Corinthians. Of the nine spiritual gifts listed in the book of Corinthians, seven of them were present in the Old Testament. You can go read accounts in the Old Testament. All seven of those gifts were manifested. However, the gift of tongues, either kind of tongues, sorry, and the interpretation of tongues was not part of that dispensation. It is part of the church age, the church dispensation. And so that's now the gifts of the Holy Spirit. With regards to the gift of other tongues as given to each saint by the Holy Spirit when they're filled, um, God in His infinite wisdom has given to His saints 
a supernatural language whereby they can communicate directly with him through their spirits. It bypasses the understanding. And so when uh, we as saints speak with other tongues, um, we do not speak with our understanding. It comes directly out of our spirit. And so with our minds, we do not understand what it is that we're praying. However, God the Father knows, and so does our spirit know. And so God's given us that supernatural ability to pray His perfect will, um, whatever situation we're bringing before Him. And so saints that do not pray with other tongues consistently um, in their Christian walk, um, think about saints who have never been filled with the Holy Spirit. They are limited in their walk with the Lord. They will never reach the fullness of the potential that God has called them to in this life. Why do I say in this life? Because tongues is not for outside of this life. It is only for now. Tongues will be done away with when um, our Lord Jesus Christ returns, but also in heaven. The saints, when they die and they go to be with the Lord, they don't speak in tongues in heaven. They speak a pure language, but they do not speak in tongues. Tongues is only for this dispensation in this life. But nevertheless, it helps the believer to reach the fullness of what God has called them to and walk in that. The Apostle Paul made the comment, I thank my God I speak with tongues more than you all. Paul had learned very uh, clearly the, the benefit of speaking in other tongues. So it's vital that believers who have been filled with the Spirit give themselves over to continuous, continuously speaking with other tongues. And for those saints who have not yet been filled with the Spirit, it is so important that they come into that encounter with the Holy Spirit so that they too can begin to speak with other tongues. And so that brings us to this passage of Scripture, 1 Corinthians 12, verse 7 to 10. Scripture says, But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. For to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit, and to another the word of knowledge through the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healings by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another different kinds of tongues, and to another the interpretation of tongues. And so in this passage of Scripture, the Apostle Paul, as I say, lists for us nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. And two of them he lists as different kinds of tongues and the interpretation of of tongues. And as I say, those two gifts are unique to this dispensation. Now, um, people who have not been baptized with the Holy Spirit, with the evidence of speaking in other tongues, they're the ones who mainly get this passage confused. Because um, Paul goes on to say, does everybody speak with tongues? And that Paul also says that when you speak with tongues, you need to also interpret. And so people who have never been baptized with the Holy Spirit and have spoken with other, other tongues, they link the two um, gifts that are mentioned in Scripture together. They think there's only the one type of gift, and that's other tongues. They do not differentiate between the spiritual gift of diverse kind of tongues or different kind of tongues and the prayer language of other tongues. They think it's all the same. And so when they see a saint just speaking out in tongues, they'll say, well, that's wrong, because he should be interpreting what he just said. And that's not the case, because as I say, they don't understand the scriptures from the point of view, and they don't know the power of God because they've never been baptized with the Holy Spirit. But even among saints who have been filled with the Holy Spirit, there is also this confusion in that it's not clearly taught to the church that there are these two time, types of tongues that are given to the church. The one is the prayer language, which is given to every single saint who has been baptized in the Holy Spirit. And they all spoke with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. That's the prayer language. The other one is this gift, spiritual gift, called diverse kind of tongues. Now, not every saint receives that. Just like not every saint receives the gift of um, gifts of healings. So it is that not every saint receives the gift of diverse kind of tongues. Only those whom the Lord has anointed for that gift. 
as just as well and, and just like that not every saint has received the gift of the interpretation of tongues only certain saints have and so the, the one who has received the gift of di of different kind of tongues as mentioned in this passage is that gift is given to them so that they can speak out a divine utterance a prophecy in church the prophecy is given by inspiration of the Holy Spirit the only difference between the prophecy given and one who has the gift of prophecy is that one who has the gift of prophecy speaks out in a known language that everybody understands one who prophesies with this gift called different kinds of tongues also prophesies but he does in a in a language that no one understands which is why this gift must also be uh, linked to um, the gift of the interpretation of tongues because it, it doesn't help the congregation to hear a, a divine utterance in, in different kinds of tongues and nobody interprets because we don't know what he said and so we don't get blessed by that as we do by prophecy however when uh, um, uh, utterance is made through this gift of different kinds of tongues and then somebody comes along and interprets that well now the congregation is blessed because now we can understand the interpretation of what the person spoke and so there is um, this these two different kinds of tongues that are given now the person who has the gift of other of the, let's go back to the spiritual gift of different kinds of tongues will also have the gift of other tongues he'll have the two languages the one is his prayer language and the other one is this language that is given to him when he speaks out a divine utterance the two languages will be completely different they will not be the same the, his prayer language the individual can pray in that language whenever they choose as all the saints can who are being have been baptized with the holy spirit this gift of diverse kind of tongues however will only make itself manifest through the individual when the holy spirit wants that individual to speak out that divine utterance he cannot speak it whenever he chooses the language won't come because it's not that's not his prayer language that is a divine utterance it's just like prophecy one who has the gift of prophecy cannot go around prophesying 24 7. he can only prophesy as he's um, moved by the holy spirit to speak out a divine utterance same thing with this uh, gift of diverse kind of tongues so the two languages are completely separate and this language of the gift will only make itself manifest when the gift is manifest now what also happens with regards to one who has this gift of diverse kind of tongues from time to time the individual will get a different language it'll be uh, a language he's not ever used before he's not or it can be that sometimes the lord in my case the lord uh, uses about two or three different dialects that i speak in when i give an utterance by uh, di different kinds of tongues i cannot speak that language when I pray to the Lord that my, my prayer language is completely different um, and so we need to recognize the difference between the two now it may also be that the one who speaks out in diverse kind of tongues or different kind of tongues also speaks out by a language that is known to some individuals in the crowd because it's a foreign language to him the speaker but to certain people that are in the congregation it's a language they understand think about again the book of Acts that's exactly what transpired and so that's the difference between the two and we need to recognize that difference so we don't get confused um, because it's when people don't don't recognize the difference between the two that they lump it all together and then confusion reigns because they when people speak in tongues they say well you're supposed to interpret that and that's not true you're not supposed to interpret your prayer language um, you can God can sovereignly allow you to but that is not the gift and so we needed to set that in um, correct right up front the next point we want to look at with regards to uh, the gift of tongues uh, we pick it up in this passage of scripture this is now now we're dealing okay I'll, I'll differentiate between the gift of diverse kind or different kind of tongues and other tongues we're not concentrating on the gift of other tongues because this is the gift that accompanies the baptism of the Holy Spirit which all saints uh, have or should have should I say Romans chapter 8 verse 26 and 27 
Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weaknesses, for we do not know what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit Himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Now he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is, because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And so um, this particular passage of Scripture uh, is not referring to tongues. It's referring to the Spirit, the, uh, uh, the Holy Spirit that dwelling within our spirits. He's the one who himself is making intercession. The Scripture says but the Spirit himself makes intercession uh, for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. That word groanings, um, actually a better translation of that is in fact signs. It can be either way, groanings or signs. Um, and so what happens is the Holy Spirit kind of, it's when the saint enters into an intense time of prayer that the Holy Spirit assists the saint in his prayers, or her prayers should I say, um, through this mechanism of groanings or signs. signs. The saint doesn't know what's going on. It's the Holy Spirit himself who is now making intercession on behalf of the saint. The Holy Spirit is now interceding according to the perfect will of God. Because the scripture is very plain. For we do not know what we should pray for as we ought. And we don't. Our understanding is extremely limited. We do not know what goes on in the spirit realm. And there is a lot, believe you me, that goes on in the spirit realm that pertains to our lives, the lives of people we're praying for, things like that. And we don't know. Or not even half of it. We don't know. We don't know a minuscule amount of it. And so this is a is a a, a, a blessing given to the body of Christ. Now, even saints who have not been filled with the Holy Spirit can give themselves over to allowing the Holy Spirit who resides on inside of every saint who's born again, to make that intercession uh, through them. If they yield to him, they can, they can do that. But the principle remains the same with regards to the gift of tongues, which is the prayer language given to every saint who has been baptized in the Holy Spirit. Because again, if we go to look at Corinthians 14, the scripture says, but if I pray with an unknown tongue, my spirit prays, but my understanding is unfruitful. Now, how do our spirits pray that? Our spirits pray because our spirits have been given uh, the language by the Holy Spirit. So it's a language that is imparted to the Spirit. Our spirits understand that language. Now, the Holy Spirit resides within our spirits. And the Bible says, um, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. For the Spirit himself bears witness with our spirits that we are the children of God. And so... God the Holy Spirit inside our spirits always knows the perfect will of God. And He bears witness with our spirits as to what God's perfect will is regarding every situation we face. So our spirits know how to pray God's perfect will regarding that situation. And so when we speak out in tongues and we speak to God, because that's what the Bible teaches us, that he prays in an unknown tongue, speaks not unto men, but unto God. And so when we speak to God in tongues, our spirits now are praying God's perfect will around the situation. Why do we need that? Because we do not know what to pray for as we ought. And so it is so vital for believers to, who have received this heavenly gift. God in his infinite wisdom has blessed the church with this gift. And it is a, a real blessing because, as I say, there's so much that goes on behind the scenes. When I say behind the scenes, I'm talking in the realm of the Spirit, that we have no idea. Even in the hearts of men, we have no idea. God, however, knows all. And so He can guide our spirits to pray effectively according to His perfect will for whatever situation we bring before Him in prayer. And so that is, again, another main reason and one of the very main reasons why it is that saints should give themselves over to praying in tongues as frequently as possible. Try match four. I thank my God I speak with tongues more than you all. And we'll end the teaching on that with that.